Right, so let's recap. After 26 years of campaigning, where are we? Well, we've negotiated the beginnings of support going forward. What we haven't done is dealt with the history. So let's deal with what ain't right and what is shite so far about the story that is the blood product scandal. First of all, we have two disasters that are almost the same, one hiding alongside the other. So let's clarify things to start off with. The experimental work, the illegal use in violation of the Nuremberg Code of Human Beings for research was almost exclusively a haemophilia thing. The uh, observation experiment started in 69, the failure to inform patients why they were getting sick, the continual monitoring, all of that was in breach of the Nuremberg Code, the Human Rights Act, the UN Accord, and ultimately common law. On top of that, you have the proof in 75 that haemophiliacs were dying from non A, non B being ignored. You've got the fact that the protein fractionation centre that was producing the blood products in Scotland was never legally What's the word for it? It was never legal. It just never was legal. It was unlicensable. It didn't have a manufacturing licence. It hid under Crown immunity, but Crown immunity doesn't exist in Scotland. It was a 13th century act that belonged to England. And funnily enough, we didn't belong to England back then. So what else have we got? We've got that. We've got the uh, breach of confidentiality in Scotland where uh, the papers heralded all haemophiliacs have AIDS. Funnily enough, I got sacked the next day. People wouldn't have looked straight in the face and two days later I got threatened with a glass and if I didn't get the fuck out of their pub, the dirty AIDS bastard. So there's all these things on top of all the other shit that's going on, like the pretense that people just die of liver disease when in fact that's complete and total tosh. There's neurological problems, Parkinson's disease, ischemia, pulmonary problems. It's a great big bloody lie at the moment. Everything. So what should come next? What should come in 2016 for victims of the blood product and the contaminated blood scandal? The truth. Open parliamentary debate fully and completely briefed. Not poor we us. What it should be about is how the fuck did this happen and how the hell do we make sure it never happens again? Well, you start off with no looking at people like me with a genetic defect as test tubes to be used, experimented on and generally kicked away when we're no longer any use. Although in our case that turns out to be never because a lot of us end up in jars sitting on people's shelves. This is a disgrace. It will stay a disgrace until the historic damages are answered, no matter how much money is paid going forward. We have had 30 years as haemophiliacs of being branded as plague carriers, treated differently, going into dentist surgeries covered in plastic and a dentist looks like he belongs in a bloody nuclear reactor, not a flipping dental surgery. The humiliation the isolation, the appalling treatment, that was our history. And the way that this has been run by Westminster is robbing us of it and it's making a lie out of the suffering of others. So what we need in 2016 is an honest story. The truth well told. We're due it. Full parliamentary debates, properly briefed properly done. We're due our history. We're due the truth before we're all gone. And here's a question. Just one for you to ask yourself. How did they know that heat treatment killed AIDS two years before they could identify HIV? Watch Factor 9. Think double blind trial and then feel your stomach turn. Get on with it, 2016. Justice for haemophiliacs and whole bloods 
and anybody else caught up in this hell. Children, wives, partners, this shame needs to end. It needs to end in 2016.